Hi guys, welcome back to the to the channel. I bought this uh, Back to the Future outfit for a fancy dress party a couple of months ago, but unfortunately lockdown prevented me from, from going to it. So I was thinking, how can I get my money back on this outfit and make it work for me? And then I remembered Snowflake has a functionality, a bit of functionality called time travel. So I dusted off my trusty hoverboard and got into full Marty McFly mode for this one. And um, and yeah, and if you stay tuned, I'm going to tell you all about what time travel is in Snowflake, what problems it solve, how do you use it, and how can you make it work for you? When I first started learning Snowflake back in 2017, I found it really difficult to find practical real world content that helped me. So I've started producing this channel and this video series to help you and hopefully save you some time and money. So I hope you find it useful. If you stay till the very end, I'll give you some extra links to some other resources that'll help continue um, you on your Snowflake journey in terms of learning that and becoming an expert. So stay to the end for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified of new content, which uh, is coming every week. Let's get into it. Okay then, so time travel in Snowflake database, what problem does it solve? So mistakes, no matter what you do, they, they happen. Not so long ago, protecting your data from accidental deletion or modification, hardware software failure or recovering a database was not a trivial affair. Thankfully, Snowflake has a range of features to help you recover gracefully from the unexpected events life sometimes throws our way. OK, so what is time travel? So time travel allows you to query data at a point in time within a defined time window using SQL. It's a little like winding back the clock on your database, allowing you to view the exact state the data was in at a specific point in time. As with many features Snowflake provides, there's nothing you need to do in the background to maintain these copies of data. Snowflake does it automatically for you. Collectively, the range of features in this category are referred to as the continuous data protection lifecycle. And that kind of looks something like this. You've got your current data storage, which is your kind of standard database operations where people are querying a database, your ETL is updating it, you've got data visualization tools or applications, uh, querying your data, consuming it, and run analytics on that. After that, and behind the scenes, you've got time travel that can run anywhere between one to 90 days, depending on your data retention sentence and the objects that you're using, which we'll cover in a couple of slides time. That allows you to run SQL commands, to be able to roll back time and look at those objects with their data at a particular point in the past. After that, you've got something called failsafe, which is the last chance to learn. You can't access that, only Snowflake employees can access that. And again, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Sorry. But the purpose of the continuous data protection lifecycle is to support your data recovery requirements for the duration of the value it provides to your organization or consumers. So how does it help you? So by using some of the SQL extensions provided for time travel operations, you can restore tables, schemas, and databases in their entirety. This includes objects which have been dropped. Yes, there's actually an undrop command. You can also query data from the past, regardless if that data has been modified since that point. Data retention periods. So to cater for the flexibility that time travel offers, Snowflake maintains versions of the data before the data was updated or deleted. It will keep these versions for as long as the data re retention period is set. And by default, in the standard edition of Snowflake, the retention period is one day or 24 hours. And in this table, we can look at the default, minimum and maximum data retention periods on a per object basis and look at the difference between the different editions, standard and then enterprise edition and, high, and higher. So it is possible to set time travel to zero. This is equivalent to disabling time travel completely, meaning historical data is no longer available to be queried. However, I'd like to point out it's important you make the right choice from the outset, extending the retention period from a lower to a higher number, for example, zero to one, doesn't mean you'll have access to that data immediately. In this instance, you'll have to wait for a day to pass until you have a full day's worth of data to access within the time travel service. To change the data retention period, you can use the account admin role to set the value for the data retention time in days parameter. You can use this parameter when creating a database schema or table to override the global default. And this means if you have a small amount of business critical data and you're running the enterprise edition of Snowflake or above in your database, you could decide to set the retention period to 90 days 
or particular object or leaving all other objects at the default of one day. I just want to mention, I hope you're finding this video useful. I've got a new book on the way about Snowflake that's going to be coming out in the next few months. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you're finding this useful. Drop a comment to me and um, let me know if there's any other particular topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Okay, moving back on. So the query and historical data. To so query previous versions of objects, you can use the at or before clauses. The specified point can be a timestamp, time offset, which basically works out a time increment from the current point in time, or a previously executed statement. Drop in and undrop in historical data. So when an object is dropped and time travel is enabled on that data, on that object, the data is not removed from the account. Instead, the version of the object is held in the background for the data retention period. You can list out any dropped objects using the show command along with the history keyword as I show in these examples. Fail safe. So what's fail safe? So after the data retention period associated with time travel ends, data cannot be viewed within your account. However, that's not the end of the story for the data because for a further non-configurable seven days, data from permanent objects ends up in something called a fail safe. This acts as a last chance saloon in the event of a failure or operational failures. Only Snowflake employees can access the fail safe and it can take several hours to recover the data from this area. Snowflake state it is provided on a best endeavor basis, meaning you should not rely on this as part of a disaster recovery scenario. I just want to make, make you aware of these links. I've got a Udemy practice question course that will help you prepare for the Snow Pro course certified test. Please uh, look me up on LinkedIn and connect with me. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think.